Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Monday, January 22nd. Tesla has started releasing the full self-driving beta version 12 update to customers. Tesla's version 12 software update is expected to introduce what Elon Musk has been calling, quote, end-to-end neural nets. Now, the biggest difference with the previous update is that the vehicle's controls would now be handled by neural nets rather than being programmed by coders. Now, in short, this means that the vehicle's behavior will also be provided by AI, just like its vision system. Many Tesla supporters believe that version 12 is going to enable Tesla to finally deliver on the full self-driving promise. They were also encouraged by Elon Musk saying that Tesla would deliver version 12 not as a beta software. So far, it's only been in use by Tesla's internal test fleet, but it's now finally getting into customers. Looks like Tesla is going to do a slow rollout starting with early full self-driving testers, who are both most used to the system and also known to be less critical of Tesla. But wouldn't you know it, the update still lists it as beta in the release notes, so there very well could be more to go. Panasonic, makers of batteries for Tesla in the U.S., is delaying a plan to build a third battery plant in North America, according to Reuters. Panasonic Group CEO Yuki Kusumi told Reuters that the company is holding off on building a third plant as, quote, demand for electric vehicles cools. Now, a third location was expected to be announced soon, but it appears the footprint will remain the same for some time. Panasonic CTO Sochihito Watanabe recently told Bloomberg in an interview that the company will deliver on its promise to quadruple production capacity by 2030. And to make that happen, he said that the company won't need to rely on building new factories or pouring large investments into production. Rather, he said, quote, we will improve battery capacity and improve productivity at the same time. Local reports out of Europe state that Stellantis-owned luxury automaker Maserati is delaying development of an all-electric version of its Quadraport sedan. The Quadraport now joins Maserati's two other flagship electric vehicles facing delays. Now, the report came from an Italian newspaper, Corriere della Sera, and followed up by Automotive News Europe, which was told by a spokesperson that the halt was triggered by, quote, the need to take zero risks on the performance level of the new car. Now, as recently as last month, the Maserati CEO, David Grasso, promised an all-electric version of the luxurious sedan that would debut in 2025, but that target is not clear at the moment. Now, the Italian media has reported that Maserati needs help to justify the Quadraport from a business standpoint, asking their suppliers to cut prices multiple times. Rivian is adding an industry vet to its team with the launch of the next-generation electric models coming up. With experience at Apple and Porsche, Jonas Reink joins Rivian to help launch the new EV platforms. Rivian CEO RJ Skarin said that Reink's experience will, quote, launch the new platforms like the R2 and R3. He will also help improve the existing R1T and R1S electric models. Rivian has been on a top-level hiring spree, scooping up Arnhelm Middelbach from Mercedes and former Stellantis North America executive Carlo Matarazzo. Acura revealed that the 2024 ZDX price will start at $64,500 plus destination fee. This one kind of hurts. Acura's parent company, Honda, has been slow to move into EV adoption, and it really shows with the Acura ZDX. Honda has partnered with General Motors for this particular program, and therefore the Acura ZDX is using GM's Ultium battery platform, which powers the Cadillac Lyric, the Chevy, Silverado, Blazer, and Equinox, and more. Acura's first EV will cost $64,500 for what they're calling an exceptionally well-equipped A-spec powertrain. This with a single motor. The high-end ZDX Type S will start at $73,500. Now, the original starting price is a little painful considering that it's $7,300 more than the Cadillac Lyric, which has the same underpinnings. Has the same battery charging, range estimate, and all of that. Google parent company Alphabet's autonomous driving unit called Waymo is looking to expand its driverless robo-taxi service in Los Angeles, where it's currently providing test rides. Although in the light of the fallout from the cruise, it might not be smooth sailing, Waymo already has a large fleet of robo-taxis in San Francisco with hopes to procure a license in Los Angeles to operate and expand its service. Waymo has been testing its driverless white Jaguars in Los Angeles for about a year and rolled out a free tour, or what they're calling a tour, this in last October to offer rides to certain areas of the city for promotion. 
but now they want to launch their full robo-taxi service where riders can order and pay for rides around the whole city. On Friday, Waymo posted on Twitter that they had applied for a license in Los Angeles and will continue working, quote, with local policymakers, first responders, and community organizers. Now, in Electrex's take, even for Waymo, it's hard to shake off the cruise disaster from recent history, especially considering that Waymo, too, has had some problems of their own. Mostly it was due to blocking traffic or refusing to respond to police orders. But these are definitely red flags for regulators making determinations on whether or not the tech is ready for prime time. Officials from Europe and the United States say that Chinese EV development is running wild and unchecked and on the verge of overwhelming the global market with with EVs that the rest of the world can't compete with. But now, China has said that they will rein in some of the huge EV expansion in response to criticisms of unfair industrial and trade policies. Back in September, the European Union launched an investigation into Chinese EV industries as European companies were struggling to compete with the cheap, high-tech Chinese imports made with low-cost labor. The EU is probing into what they say are unfair subsidies and bank lending campaigns from Beijing that fueled the outsized growth in China, this with fears that China is building EV plants far beyond levels needed for domestic demand. But now the Financial Times reports that the Beijing government will control blind construction of new EV projects happening within the country and taking forceful measures. Xin Guobin, the vice minister of Industry and Information Technology, told the Financial Times, quote, there are also some disorderly competition behaviors. Now, meanwhile, the U.S. and Europe are tightening their rules and tariffs on Chinese cars and EV parts. In my personal opinion, I trust the Chinese government about as far as I can throw it. And with 98 million members of the Chinese Communist Party, ah, well, you get the idea. In today's community comment found on YouTube, a few of you aptly surmised that I was traveling over the weekend, and that was indeed the case. This certainly isn't the first time. Back during COVID, I did quick charge while traveling, and I brought most of my setup with me. I was actually able to use the totally unencumbered internet that was provided by an empty corporate office. Many times, including trips to Grandma's house, I've had to cram an episode into humorously small upload rates. To avoid a five-hour upload time, I wound up just lowering the quality of the finished product. However, over time, I wised up and started filming my shows at lower resolutions. When I learned that most viewers watch on their phones, and many don't even watch the screen at all, I started to really enjoy making a low-resolution workflow even here in the studio. Normally, I use an old workhorse camera that caps out at 1080p. With this, I can edit very fast and clean out my cards quite infrequently, and also I can use the same work project for many, many long hours. Unfortunately, I can't do that for today since I'm actually filming at 5.3K and 60 frames per second. I'm actually using a different camera and lens too, so I had to adjust where the tripod is and all that stuff. I don't believe there's too much to be gained by all of this detail, but you guys can let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.